Hello, my name is Matthew Schreiner, and I'm a Catholic, and I'm here to give a message to all Catholics, everybody in the church, bishops, priests, cardinals, deacons, laity, everybody. If the Pope finds this, this is a message for all of it, all the church, not just for a certain person, a certain group, but for the whole church. We are coming up on the time of Advent and a time of New Year. This time of New Year is in two ways. Number one, the new liturgical year, bringing us from one year in cycle of the Gospels and readings to another year in another cycle of the Gospels and readings. And with this new year comes Lent, this comes Advent, and also comes a time of a new year in the physical sense, in the calendar sense, calendar over here. And every year we begin a new calendar year. A new year is a time of change. With new does come change. And with this new and with this new year coming, I'm here to present you, Catholics, and even some Christians, with a message and a opportunity for change and a resolution. As well, I give you something to think about for Advent. Advent is a time similar to Lent, though we don't often think of them as being equal. We often think of them as being two separate things. All, the only thing connecting them is they are a time of waiting, a time when the priest wears purple, and a time where not much happens that's interesting, like Easter, like Christmas. It's just a time of waiting. But that time of waiting is a time to remind ourselves what we are waiting for, and that is for Christ. And so I want to let you give a few things for you to think about this Advent, and followed by some things I want to see us do as a church. Number one, with this Advent season, I want us to think and prepare ourselves for Christ. What does Christ want us to do to prepare our hearts for him and to make us worthy of him? What I think of is confession. I can tell you, confession is the thing you have a love-hate relationship with. You love it because it makes you feel clean, but you hate having to go to it and saying it. And I understand that. I can tell you, confession is the thing that you love because you get to feel pure after and you get to feel this forgiveness. But I, you hate to go in there and confess your sins to the priest. And that we understand. But during this season, make this something. I don't think you should go every week. But during this time, the church says that you should go at least once a year. And so during the times of Advent and Lent are great times to go. If you don't go in Advent, go in Lent. But please go in Lent before Easter. And if you have the time to, go in Advent. As well, prepare yourself with the Eucharist and prayer. During this time, we have these little purple books or blue books in the church. And grab one of these and pray it every day. Pray. Pray every day. Pray in the morning. Pray in the evening. Pray in the nighttime. Pray when you have this time to do it. I find it's easier to pray when I have the time to do it. In the morning. It's easier to pray in the, pray in the morning because I have this time set up in the morning. At night, it's easy to pray in the night because you you have this time to just sit back in your bed and pray. So find times where you can pray. And that's a great thing to do. Make prayer a part of your schedule. A part of that, I just want to say that we are coming at the time of Lent and Advent. And this time of Advent is a time to prepare yourself. Take Advent as a time to experiment with your prayer routine, with a prayer life, and with this life. Because experimenting is a great thing. And I think that Lent is a great time to, Advent is a great time to remind us of this waiting we have. And that waiting is a great way to prepare ourselves for Christ. And so in this time, get yourself ready and think about what would Jesus want me to do? And we don't need these little bracelets that say WWJD, what would Jesus do? We can just think about it. We don't need bracelets. I don't look at my wrist. Only when I have a watch. I'm not wearing a watch right now. If I had a watch on, I'd be, I'd have an excuse to check my wrist, but I don't check my wrist when I'm thinking about every action I do, unless I'm looking at the, ca at the time. So we don't need bracelets to remind us what to do. But my other thing I want to share is I want us as a church to improve. And that starts with evangelizing. I can tell you as a Catholic, we need to be better on our evangelizing. What I think is we, only, we don't evangelize. Us as people don't go out and evangelize. And that's what I'm asking you to do. I want you to go out and evangelize. Go out and have a conversation about Christ. The lady, we don't talk enough about Christ. I don't see the lady, I don't see a need for the lady to go up in front of the church because they're not, they're not trained for that. 
But to go out and talk to our brothers and sisters, especially those who are not Catholic, to go out and to share our faith is a great thing. We don't share our faith like we used to, and we need to be better about that. So go out and talk with people. Talk with those who especially are not Catholic. Don't think about this as forcing your religion on someone, because it's not. It's evangelizing. Jesus says to go and evangelize. What And what do we need to do? We need to evangelize, especially to those who are unevangelized, those who are not Catholic, and those who are not good Catholics. Now, I'm not trying to say don't point out the fact that they are sinners. They are heretics. Look past that and convert the soul. Don't convert, convert the person and the soul. Look past the dirt in front of the sin, in front of the soul, clean that dirt, help them. But I also want to say that we have clergy who don't follow their example. They don't practice what they preach. We have priests, great priests, but they tell you what to do, but I feel they themselves don't do it. And what they should do is not just stand at the pulpit and tell us about Christ, but to go out and tell them about Christ. There's sort of a stigma about priests. They're all that they are, are terrible people because of something priests did in the 60s and the 70s and in this time of an abuse scandal. And to put it lightly, I don't think that this is the worst thing the church has ever done. And the church has done much worse things for its history. The Crusades, all the people back then who were killed, it was terrible. But the priest abuse scandal compared to what there is now, yeah, that was terrible. That was not a massive la loss of lives. What happened then? Massive loss of lives that were unnecessary. Don't be forceful with the way you convert people. Be light. Don't be like the past Catholics. But we need the but we need clergy, priests, brothers, sisters. We need anybody religious to go out. We need our priests to go out and to practice what they preach. To go out in the world, tell the gospel. Don't just sit in your office and wait for people to come to you and evangelize them then. Don't just go into the pulpit and evangelize there. Go out into the actual world, the world that God created, his marvelous world, and tell people. Don't just tell Catholics. Because I don't think Catholics are always the ones needing conversion. We need people other out of the church to be converted. But we as Catholics need a conversion of hearts as well. And that's what we need priests to tell us. We need priests to tell us to go out in the world. We need our priests to follow that example and go out in the world. Again, people nowadays will look at it as forcing your religion, but this is what Jesus instituted. He said, go to the ends of the world and proclaim the gospel. You don't need to carry around a big Bible. I've got a big Bible over there. I'm not going to carry that around. I don't want to carry that around. I wouldn't carry that around in a bag, but we have smaller Bibles, but don't just take the Bible, do stuff as well, and show an example of faith. Jesus healed lepers. He sat with sinners. Have you ever done that? Undoubtedly you have because we're all sinners, so you've sat with sinners. But we need to go out and to talk to those who don't have much. They're, when you're out and about, you, you probably see people who are homeless. And I want you to talk to them. What you do is you might give them a dollar, but what does a dollar do? It gives them closer to a meal. And that's great. Yes, give them a dollar, a dollar or more. It gives them closer to another meal. But above all, pray for him and pray with him. Sit with him and help him. Convert him. Maybe if, he, if he's a really nice guy, go out and get him lunch. Because what they really need is they need someone guiding and helping them. Yes. A dollar is great, and if you need, and if they're there, give them money because that's what they need. Is they need help, but give them help just more than a gift. Give them yourself. If you fail to see Christ in that leper, in in that beggar, you will fail to see him in the chalice. So go out and help your fellow brother and sister who is suffering, because Jesus is in them. He's in us all. But he's especially in that man on the street who has nothing, who is lost, who is suffering. <clears throat> help him and help your fellow brother and sister who are sick, who are homeless. Volunteer. 
above all volunteering but when you talk to people like that and you tell them about your faith they'll see you as a shining example of that faith and see wow this faith is really great they help people like me they help people and if they get back up on their and if they get back up on their feet which isn't i mean as a metaphor but if they get back up and they are ready and they can get a job they'll help people as well and they'll see this shining example of faith radiant from you and find that faith and realize that this faith is helpful. We who show this faith are helpful. So priests, brothers, sisters, deacons, everybody, everybody in the church, but especially this, the, the religious, the people who are the church, who represent the church, the, the bishops, these, all these clergy, go out, the religious, go out, help people, help people. Go out in the world and don't be ashamed of your faith. I'm going to pull up something. This is a, um, a little card from CNEWA. And so I'm assuming it's some Catholic news organization with the Pope. But what this is, is this is a picture of Pope John Paul II out in some forest preserve. And he is praying a rosary. And I want people like that, us who are lay and who are priests and who are bishops and people like that, like Pope Francis or Pope John Paul II, and even Pope Francis, to be out and to be open and to go in and be a shining example of faith by helping, by showing what our faith is truly about, by helping people, but going out and praying. I love and I think that praying outside is a better way to pray than praying inside. Yes, praying inside is great, but when there's time, Go and pray outside because you get to see and smell the beauty of God. So when you're outside, pray. And even in public, don't be ashamed to pray. The prayer should be something we show ourselves as Christians, that we are devout. So my message here was not really about prayer. My message was for all Catholics to go out and to preach. To go out and to be a shining example of faith. And I don't want just a lady. I want priests, I want friars, I want nuns, sisters, I want deacons, I want all these people to go out. Go out in your religious habit, your religious garb, and show yourselves as a shining example of faith. If you go out in your habit and your collar, people will see you and they'll say, that guy's a priest, or that guy's a friar, or that girl's a sister, or that guy might be a priest or a deacon, but even then, go out in your collar, and get people. Wear your cassock, help people, have them see you as a shining example of faith and come to you. Because if we have priests out in public, that's great. Because we have these priests who are ready and who are ready for confession, who are there and help to say, hey, I'm here, help me come, be a guiding hand. But well, there's also this thing, we have the priest shortages. We have shortages all the time. These shortages come and go. And I think we've been in a long one for a while, but why are we not getting vocations? Well, I was talking with a teacher and he said, one of the main reasons we are not getting vocations is we don't have strong marriages. We don't have people getting married in the church. 90% of our priestly vocations come from strong marriages. And I'm assuming that that goes for all vocations. I'm going to now pick on a few priests, a priest I know, Father Burke Masters, who is the pastor at uh, a church in Hinsdale, Illinois, here in the Diocese of Joliet, where I am. This is my home diocese. And he was not raised in a Catholic family, but he was in a strong family, a tight-knit family. So my point is, these 90% are strong families. They've got tough ties. And even if they're not Catholic, we still see people who convert and who have the strong tie with God and strong tie with their family who become these priests. When we get stronger marriages and more marriages in the church, or even just stronger marriages outside of the church, strong Christian families who are centered with God and prayer and all this, we'll get our priests. We'll get our vocations. So we need to stop forcing sort of religious life and all this. We need to stop, you know, it, for lack of a better way to say this, but we need to stop shoving down the priestly vocation down everyone's throat because it's sickening to many people. I was talking with him. He said, it's sickening to me when I was a kid. And that was how they said, it's priest, 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 priest. But we don't go to like the religious orders. We don't go to sisters. We don't go to this. Pardon me. But we don't go to this. We already, we say, 
priesthood or there's yeah when somebody says vocations or discernment what do you automatically think you're automatically thinking priest so don't i want vocations i want i don't want there was a video by father um casey cole where he said don't become a priest now i haven't seen that video but his message i'm assuming is correct because not, the priesthood's not for everybody, and it's being shoved down people, so it's like the priesthood is for everybody. There's marriage. There's religious life. Choose one of these routes as well. But marriage is what we need. We need strong marriages in the church, and that will come when we evangelize. That will come when we ourselves about the faith we want to live. When we tell people about this, they'll come. We need people, and we need vocations. We need marriages. We need strong families. So that's what we need. Go out. Have a strong family. And that's how we're going to get these priests. Because if we don't have strong families and we don't have strong faith, the church is just going to die. I don't see the church dying, but I do see it fading. I do see declining. And by that time, when we're outside of the church, there's no hope for us. We heard in the gospel this Sunday about how we must wait for Christ, wait for his coming and be prepared for his coming. Because if we're not, He's going to lock the door and it's too late. So prepare, help people come and help stick people with faith. And above all, we'll need priests. So have a strong marriage. I'm going to come back and revisit on some of the stuff I've touched on and more expand on, especially in the priesthood. But I want to just mention this out and bring this out. So if you get this message, if you see this, share this with your friends. Like and subscribe because, not because I want publicity, not because I want to be internet famous, but because I want this message to go far. This is not me. This is my message. This is a message of the church. So share this message, please. I want this to go far, not because I want to be famous, but because I want the church to be a better place for all. Thank you.